This is our, our latest installment on our monthly figures for the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, this session will be recorded and will be available afterward uh, upon request. Um, uh, you're going to be hearing from uh, several people today. Uh, first, you're going to be hearing from Commissioner John McCarthy, President of the Port of Tacoma Commission and Co-Chair of the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Uh, and also Commissioner Fred Fellerman, Vice President of the Seattle Port of Seattle Commission. And then you'll be hearing from John Wolf, the CEO of the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Um, and uh, uh, we're happy to take any questions you may have uh, after uh, the speakers are done. Uh, and then certainly any follow-up questions you may have, feel free to reach out to either myself or Akiko Oda at the Port of Tacoma. Um, and with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Commissioner John McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, well, good morning. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today, and we look forward to your questions. Uh, we are committed to uh, continue uh, to keep cargo flowing efficiently and safely uh, through our gateway. Uh, we're also, as you know, continuing to do our part uh, to keep the economy churning and people employed particularly through this uh, COVID uh, virus throughout and by doing that through export and import activities at our facilities. Uh, you'll hear more from my colleague, Commissioner Fellerman, but I wanted to reiterate to you the importance of replacing or uh, repairing the West Seattle Bridge. On Thursday, Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin signed a proclamation of civil emergency regarding the closure of the West Seattle High Rise Bridge. Uh, in today's uh, Seattle Times, you may have uh, seen and read an op-ed piece by Commissioner Steinbrook and myself uh, making just this point. It's an issue of statewide significance that we need, we desperately need to tackle immediately. Uh, with that, I'll turn over for further comments to Commissioner Fellman. Well, thank you. I uh, appreciate the public's interest, the media's attention to our uh, status in the global trade and the importance of the West Seattle Bridge in particular right now. Uh, the fact is that you sometimes you don't know what you got till it's gone, or at least when it's threatened. So it's really important that uh, we like to have the attention for when things are going good, but it's really important now that people understand the importance of, of our uh, role in a diversified economy, especially during this time. There's always been uncertainty associated with trade this past year with the tariffs on Chinese goods and obviously the impact of COVID on our economy, but the status of the West Seattle Bridge really is our existential threat to the gateway if it does severely impact the cargo movement to and from T5. Now, but let's be clear, with all this uncertainty, the one thing you can be certain about is our commitment to make sure that uh, continued access to T5 is done and is done in context with commitment to the communities surrounding the area. But this is what well, over like 300 or close to a billion, half billion dollars worth of investment have been put into Terminal 5 or is committed to Terminal 5, 340 million of which coming from the Seaport Alliance, about a third of that for environmental upgrades for whether it be electrification or stormwater. These are massive investments that are a commitment to the diversified economy that we need to preserve in the Northwest. We are uh, very much appreciative of the mayor's actions uh, yesterday to declare this emergency and ca calling on the governor to do the same. So all hands are on deck to uh, solve this problem in a way that is of a great interest, of collaborative with the whole region. The ports have a unique role to play perhaps in the maritime, uh, uh, the, the fast ferry component of this to help alleviate some of that traffic. but. All you should know is that we stand ready to be part of the solution because there's too much at stake to fail. Thank you. Okay, John, if uh, you can um, uh, uh, present us with some of the latest uh, figures that we have for the month of June. Great, Peter, and uh, thank you all for joining us today. John Wolf, CEO, CEO of the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Uh, the uh, 
start with some really good news. The Gateway continues to remain open and operational during this uh, health crisis due to a large degree by the continued coordination between our supply chain partners. The Seaport plays a critical role in supporting the nation's economic recovery, and we must continue to work together uh, to function at such a high level. So uh, our commitment is to continue to stay in close coordination with our labor partners and our terminal operators and the other supply chain partners that we depend on for a highly functional gateway here in the Puget Sound. As anticipated, the, uh, the fallout from COVID-19 pandemic continues to disrupt the global supply chain. Uh, we handled just over 287,000 TUs in the month of June, which is about a 16 and a half percent decrease compared to June of 2019. Uh, within that figure, full imports declined by approximately 15 percent and full exports declined by approximately 8 percent. And for the first half of this year, the Seaport Alliance handled approximately 1.564 million TEUs. Uh, the overall container volumes have declined approximately 18% compared to the first half of the year 2019. Shifting to some of the other cargoes that we handle through this gateway, our auto volumes reflect the economic downturn felt by the automotive industry across the country. Volumes are down nearly 21% year over year. Yet some good news, we're holding our own uh, with our brake bolt cargo volumes, which are down just 1% year over year. Our overall domestic container volumes, and this is service uh, to Alaska and Hawaii, those volumes are down uh, about 7% year to date over 2019. Through June, the shipping lines have canceled 55 of their scheduled visits to Seattle Tacoma Harbor. There are seven more canceled sailings uh, projected through September uh, for a total of 62 canceled sailings forecasted for the year. Yet this is a very fluid situation, so that number could change. There were a total of 58 canceled sailings in all of 2019, uh, in part driven by the trade dispute with China. So you can get a comparison of what we're experiencing this year versus last year uh, with the added complexity of COVID. These canceled sailings not only disrupt terminal operations in our harbors, they create a ripple effect across the whole nation supply chain. As a result, uh, our terminal operators continue to adjust gate schedules. Some good news around that is that we're seeing uh, less of the uh, daily cancellation of uh, terminal operations at the gate as a result of an uptick in volume over the last few weeks. Pierce County Terminal in Tacoma is back operating five days a week. Uh, and, um, and both Pierce County Terminal and Husky Terminal in Tacoma are offering ex extra gates uh, during hoot hours as the volume uh, starts to increase here in the second half of the year. In terms of jobs, these impacts are felt by our longshore workers, truck drivers, and rail operators who help move the cargo through the gateway. So we are doing everything we can, again, in coordination with the terminal operators and our shipping lines to try to attract more cargo through the gateway and increase the job opportunities and hours with our longshore workers. I wanna highlight another bit of good news. As we expand, uh, experience these canceled sailings, uh, we continue to remain flexible and, and capitalize on every available business opportunity to ensure cargo moves efficiently through our gateway. And I wanna call out that Matson, one of our valued customers who currently operates at Terminal 5 in Seattle, normally offers a weekly domestic service between Seattle and Hawaii. Well, just this last month, Matson was repositioning one of its vessels after uh, coming out of dry dock in China and took the opportunity to contact customers in the Pacific Northwest to offer one-time direct voyage 
into Terminal 5. This vessel departed Shanghai on June 20th and arrived July 2nd in Seattle. The longshore workers unloaded 167 full containers and another 115 uh, of these containers were transported by rail to the Midwest. So it, it gives you a good example of where we are taking opportunity to attract more cargo through this gateway in partnership with the shipping lines that call uh, Seattle Tacoma. I want to thank and uh, commend Madsen for its swift action in serving our import customers and being opportunistic through our gateway. So it's hard to believe that we're halfway through the year. And as we look back uh, at the last six months, certainly it's been a challenge for us, both in terms of the, the uh, volumes that we've handled as compared to previous years, and also the uh, service interruptions that we've experienced due to uh, the tra ongoing trade war with China and COVID-19. As we look to the second half of this year, it's really difficult for us to predict uh, what our expected cargo volumes are gonna look like. Yet some encouraging news, uh, we are seeing, as I mentioned earlier, fewer canceled sailings or forecasted canceled sailings. And we are starting to see an uptick in our volume uh, here in July and uh, what we're hearing from our customers uh, through the balance of this summer. As we look out further into uh, uh, next year, this pandemic is likely uh, going to have a deeper and longer global impact than we've seen even with some of the other crises that the industry has experienced in, pa in the past. The extent of the disruption will vary by commodity, by trade lane and mode of transport. And we'll also be steered by local differences uh, as to the severity of the crisis. As mentioned earlier, the nature of the crisis does provide opportunities for logistics and supply chain companies, including ports. And I want to leave you with the fact that we are aggressively pursuing new markets and leaning into innovative approaches to new, new service offerings for our customers through this gateway so that we can position ourselves in a stronger way and, and market our gateway against our competitors. So with that, I'll turn it back to you, Peter. Thank you. John, thanks very much. Uh, with that, um, uh, we're uh, open to any questions folks may have at this time. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Commissioner Fellman, uh, uh, would you like to make a, uh, a point there? One, one quick point I, I failed to mention. And you know, my colleagues of the, the, the co-chairs of the Seaport Alliance did a beautiful job in that op-ed. Uh, but one, one of the things that you, it's worth noting is that this can often be reduced to, uh, as the comments to that op-ed will say, oh, this is a Seattle problem that bridges, why should the rest of the region care about this? It's fundamental that everybody understands one of the keys to our gateway is exports. These ships have to have a reason to come here. We're one of the largest ex uh, use of uh, refrigerated cargo in the whole country. And that if those Eastern Washington farmers are gonna get their goods to market, they're gonna count on the, the health of the West Seattle Bridge. So it's, it's not a reduced to Seattle and it's really critical that this point is seen as a regional challenge. All right, indeed. Um, um, any, any questions uh, for um, any of the uh, uh, media here that have joined us on the call today? I had, I had one on, um, I missed it. I couldn't write fast enough uh, that John was saying the, for the June export num import numbers, what was the percent down there? John, the, did you uh, yeah, so, sorry, I had myself on mute again. Uh, the, I think the question was, what was the uh, decline in full imports um, over previous year uh, for the month of June? It was down 15%, and our full exports declined by 8%. Okay, that's, that was what I was missing. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, a question from Bill Mongaluzzo. Has COVID-19 impacted our construction schedule out at Terminal 5? 
Peter, I'm ha- this is John again. I'm happy to take that question. Uh, thanks for that question, Bill. Very uh, to to a very slight level, I, I would say minimal impact. In fact, um, our schedule has uh, slid by a couple of months, and um, it, it's a combination of things. Uh, one of which is ensuring that the workforce there that is performing the construction has a safe uh, environment to work in. And so there have been some steps taken uh, to ensure uh, that that workforce has, has uh, the equipment and, um, and they're able to perform the work in a safe manner. So that did cause maybe a slight delay, but we are essentially uh, two months off of schedule, which we can manage through. And there's still some opportunity to pick up uh, time on that schedule. And uh, the good news is, is we are, uh, we remain on budget with that project. Uh, John, uh, uh, another question here, a follow-up question was, uh, what do we attribute the 1% down in break bulk to? Only 1% down. Yeah, uh, thank you for that question. First of all, uh, we have a really strong partner in uh, Willenius Wilhelmsen line that uh, has uh, regular service into the Tacoma Harbor providing uh, about 90% of our break bulk business. And um, they, uh, a couple of years ago, made a decision to invest more heavily into our gateway. And uh, as part of that investment, they constructed their own processing facility to assist with the cargo that's moving in and out of our uh, Tacoma Harbor. And as a result of that, they really doubled down on their efforts to uh, bring more cargo through this facility. And so it's really as a result of that strong partnership relationship with WWL and their commitment to use our gateway in a stronger way based upon the shared investment that we've made into that facility. Okay, great. Uh, another question uh, here, uh, one from Como asking, is there a way to quantify uh, the effect of the West Seattle Bridge closure uh, on our operations? Uh, Peter, maybe, I, I don't know if we want to first give opportunity for the co-chairs to answer that. I'm happy to to take it if if they would like me to, but I'll start with the commissioner. Go ahead, John. Why don't you go ahead and answer that? Okay. Um, so right now, uh, the, the critical aspect of the West Seattle Bridge issue has to do with the lower bridge and maintaining that functionality because uh, we recognize the upper bridge is either going to be repaired or replaced over uh, hopefully, of course, of a uh, couple of years, sooner the better. In the meantime, it's imperative that we uh, work with the city, which we have, to uh, ensure that freight is a priority on that lower bridge. And so, to date, there has been no negative impact associated with uh, the flow of cargo out of the Seattle Harbor as a result of the failure of the upper bridge. And again, I want to put emphasis on the fact that it is going to be critical for us and our customers that that lower bridge remain operable during this time of repair or replacement to the upper bridge, which I believe therefore will ensure that we can minimize any impact on the Seattle Harbor. Thanks, John. Just to put a fine point on that, we really do appreciate the city's prioritization of freight, transit, and emergency vehicles on the lower Spokane Street Bridge. And that's actually essential for us to continue uh, moving forward. And if I could just chime in on that, you know, obviously we need to be able to maximize the number of people um, that can use mass transit. And one of the challenges that COVID adds to this challenge is how many people you can squeeze on a bus or on a ferry. And so 
these are compounding challenges in trying to uh, mitigate the uh, limited volumes that we can use for this access to the peninsula. So it definitely is going to take all hands on deck to be part of the solution. Okay, um, uh, are there any uh, further questions uh, from, uh, uh, from the media here this morning? Uh, of course, you always have an opportunity to follow up with uh, either myself or uh, Akiko at the Port of uh, Tacoma. We're happy to uh, uh, supply any um, you know, further uh, uh, numbers. And um, you know, again, we're gonna have the press release up if it hasn't been up uh, uh, already. And um, uh, you know, again, happy to take any uh, questions you have here, um, you know, for the uh, for the rest of the day. Um, but uh, also, in the interest in of, of time, knowing that uh, folks need to produce their stories and um, and write their content, um, we're also um, you know happy to uh, uh, conclude here on time as well. Well, Peter, thank you for having, putting this together and thank you all for being here this morning. All right, great. Greatly thank you, Commissioner. Greatly appreciate your all attention to this ongoing critical issue to our whole region. All right, great. Until next month, folks, we'll, uh, uh, we'll see you then. <laughs>